you've had the chance to uh, walk around with us and take a look at the Mahindra Reva facility, but uh, there is primarily one man behind all of it, someone who you've seen on the show before, so uh, doesn't need an introduction as such. Chetan Maini, good to see you. Thanks, thanks, Ayat. And as I said to you when I first walked in and met you, good to see you here, you know, unlike uh, at one of the Global Motor Shows or at, uh, you know, the Auto Expo or any other event. Yeah, it's glad to have you here. I'm, I'm very grateful and um, we've had the chance, like I was saying, to, to sort of walk around, look at things. Um, I have to ask you when, you, when you see the scale of what's come up around us now, um, and scale not in just physical terms, um, what, what, do you, what do you take away from that? I think the, the last few years have been very interesting. Interesting uh, two ways, I think globally, all of a sudden everyone's getting into electric cars, which is kind of changing the entire scale and thought process, uh, with countries like Norway almost hitting 20% of electric cars. And for us, this time has been very good because not only have we put up this facility of 30,000 vehicles, been able to expand our distribution network, get new product out, but also build in the sustainable green culture within an organization, which I think is a very important aspect as we drive into global markets. And I can see that around me as well. I can even hear it because it doesn't sound like a car plant, doesn't look like a car plant. Uh, and we've, of course, already talked about the ways in which, uh, you know, it's energy efficient. Um, so it is crucial for you to make sure, in a sense, that this kind of infrastructure is also part of the process. Yeah, I think uh, our whole thought process of the future mobility in the five Cs, the first being clean, was how do we make end-to-end -end clean? And I think uh, we already had the product clean, so that was addressed. Now how do we make them cleaner? So we said from, from a plant that could be platinum rated and very clean, to every process, be it getting, you know, using pre-impregnated panels and bonding them instead of having larger plants, or energy efficient conveyor lines, or even drive trains, the end of testing that generate back energy, uh, became a, a thought process of how we can look at energy efficiency very differently. And, and I think today maybe it's a nice to have. I think five years from today it's going to be hygiene, and I think organizations are just going to need it. Uh, but today as we look at global markets and our global player, it's important to have both internally and externally reflect our brand values on every aspect we do. And if clean is so important to us, then it had to be in every aspect of what we did. How crucial is it for you to think of yourself as a global player and not just an Indian player? I mean, you've already had that experience even before Mahindra came along. But, uh, but you know, there was this sort of inherent sense of being an Indian company. Do you think that somewhere changed as well for you? I do think so. I think that uh, it changed slowly where even in the past, almost 50% of cars were exported and we had them in 20 plus countries. This feeling and exposure that we were much more uh, or we already started at an early stage. And I think with the newer product, it gave the organization a lot more confidence for us to see that this can now be on a larger canvas. Uh, and I think uh, we, we have right through seen ourselves from everything. And so things that we do in here for the Indian product is designed upfront to be European, uh, be it on recyclability, end of life, or on crash testing. And so we've already built products to be of global standards. And I think doing that creates a culture that you always think global and you don't design something at different levels for different organizations. Different try and different adapt different. Yes. And, and reverse engineer yeah. in some cases. Um, but tell me this, you know, the, of course, we all had us, even, even us from the outside looking in, had a different impression in terms of the kind of volume you might have been doing by now. Um, I know a lot of it has to do with even policy and perhaps now with the new government that might change. But um, Regardless of, of the number of cars that you have sold and they're out there, uh, the inevitable question is what, what's next, right? Everybody always wants to know. Um, you have already shown, you know, you, you had the NXR and the NXG. Uh, is that the, the expected way to go or is this other whole side that we are seeing with, you know, talk about the electric cars uh, coming using existing architecture from Mahindra, you know, like the Verito or even the uh, commercial vehicles um, and of course the Halo sports car. Which, which is the, the more logical way to go for you? Or is it both? <laughs> so I think, I think it's both. We see one as products that we would do in-house, which um, look at simplicity, look at a high level of innovation, unique design, uh, and enable us to build the technology platforms on this area. The fact that we've done it enables us to then leverage it to other platforms. 
Um, so uh, the, uh, the E2O that you have today and the future Halo uh, and other products like this would come from our product line. We hope to probably uh, have one a year or so, you know, in a product or a variant. But if you've developed the kind of equivalent of an Intel inside, then you've got to leverage this, right? And so all of a sudden, you cannot overnight take the Mahindra network and say, let's start all products from scratch. So the low-hanging fruit would be to use existing platforms and electrify them uh, right through. And I think the Maximo, the Verito, fall in those areas which leverage our capabilities. And so uh, longer term, you'll see products probably right from the beginning that would maybe have an electric powertrain and uh, uh, other fuel powertrains available from Mahendras coming out and we would provide it in. But as an interim, we think that both of these allow us to be there. And it's a large market. I think tomorrow we'd like a customer to come into a showroom and, if, and have options in electric cars. They need a five-door one, they want a smaller one, they want a different one, and select one of them uh, an electric vehicle is not synonymous with only one look, but it has options like any other product does. And we see the market growing and we want to, so I think it's a dual strategy, enables us to do both these activities. Chetan, your opinion counts in what I'm going to ask you next, because you know, you obviously so heavily sort of invested into this particular ecosystem to begin with. Um, the point you make about you know, different kinds of electric vehicles, um, globally we saw whether it was hybrids or whether it's you know, full EVs, uh, we've seen that little transition happen off late, where initially the car needed to look distinct so that you know people identified it as different, but now it's trying to be more ubiquitous. Um, with the E2, E2O as well, we have that distinct look. And uh, to a lot of people, that could be you know something that goes against it because they're like, hang on a second, I just want a car that looks like a car. Uh, and great if it saves me money along the way. Um, how do you meet that challenge in an Indian context? I Which think is the right approach, let's say. Um I think it's not completely safe. It's got to be a little bit that is uh, differentiating. You know, uh, I think the people who are today adopting to electric mobility are people who think a little bit differently. And so I think in the early days, design that's a little bit more unique, uh, not too out there, but a little bit more unique will get there. And I think what we tried to do in, e in the E2 was just that, was just you know, give you a little bit more uh, a different uh, red water glass, a few features that are very unique that make people think uh, a line on the door that you haven't seen before, uh, but not out, not so out there that someone says, hey, this is just, you know, very different. I think just kind of get a curiosity. I think uh, in Europe you're seeing both. Uh, I, I, I'm seeing companies that are going direct with regular products and others. I believe people who have differentiated styling in general are selling more than others. So I think for some time that is going to continue. Uh, and uh, and then you know design is so it's so changing. I think we'll have to meet requirements of people. The halo is something very different, and and I think we'll have to see requirements and change to that. A lot of that you'll have to just take as it comes as well, because you have no idea what the next trend is. Uh, Formula E, you know that's again that was again a nice little surprise. Nobody really saw saw that coming again from an Indian uh, perspective. Uh, what does it do for you, or what will it do for you? Well, I think. A lot to me. First, um, this whole impression that electric cars or golf carts need to go. And, and I think when people start seeing cars go 0 to 100 in under 3 seconds and, and go 220 kilometers an hour, people don't say, oh wow, I couldn't believe electrics do this. Having them in city centers is going to get a different type of crowd. It's going to be people with their spouses and kids out there for a weekend. Um, and that means electric mobility is really here, we'll create. And I think the biggest thing the industry today needs is awareness. So I think that's a good part for us right Great through. Visibility, yeah. yeah. The second, I think, is a brand part. You know, I think Mandra is really looking at how we get our brand. And motorsports has always been a large portion of building people's brands. Uh, and that works well with us uh, from our perspective. It's in, you know, ten, in 10 cities globally, which, which sets the pace for us. Works well with us because we're also entering the E2O into these markets. And, and so therefore people can relate that, hey, there's a Mahindra racing car and tomorrow there are electric cars from there. There's a technology link. But internally for us, we think uh, that racing pushes engineering to the limits. It produce, pushes teamwork to the limit, you know. And, and we think that this is where Mahindra Ray would have a large role. It, and I see it a two-way strip. I think we're going to contribute a lot into this and I think we're going to get a lot. 
And this is a little bit different from other motorsports because technology is quite apart. Um, but in electric mobility, the battery systems we would use or we use in Formula E are probably 90% similar. The management systems and telematics are similar. Our simulation capability is similar. So, so we see a lot more road to race. Uh, and I think that means you don't, while you have a separate team, you also have your current team part of it. So I'm really hoping in the future, you know, the perf we get the performance part here and we probably push affordability into the other side and look mm -hmm. at it. And, and, and the constructors championship uh, is an important aspect in this. You had me smiling through that because I was going to ask you exactly that. You know, the whole race to road kind of thing, it, it's so different when you derive something as opposed to literally transporting it from one to the, to the other. And I think you have a greater opportunity to do that. Yeah, I mean, just a simple example, an engine in a regular car may go up to eight, 9,000 RPM, but a, an F1 would be 17,000. Electric cars go 13, 14,000 RPM, and maybe the race versions go 2,000 more. So the gap between race and street is, real. is yeah. much, is much, is very little. And so you don't need this whole new kind of development. You're just pushing the edge in each area. Um, so that I think is where it's a big advantage in electric. The fact that you get to be that, you know, in contention for that constructor's title going forward, uh, and of course, it, you know, everybody will want to go after that, which means that you'll keep trying to get better and better. Um, do you think that the, uh, the cycles would get shorter in terms of how much of that translates to road cars? Very much. I do think so. I think that uh, if you, I think a good analogy is what you're seeing in smartphones and everything, right? The product development cycle is a year because they're highly driven by software, electronics, and batteries. What you're talking about is we're not touching, we're not touching chassis and suspensions. These are given. They're, they've enough optimized in aerodynamics and tires. We're just focusing on exactly those aspects, which means a new generation software may give me 10% more performance, and I can work on that in six months and get it out. So it's going to be, yes, uh, much easier. Uh, uh, much faster, I think, um, and uh, and the nice thing is technology is not from the same place. The battery technology may be coming from a from a you know a different industry, and the motor technology, electronics. So it's going to be a little bit different than probably companies that already worked in one area. Collaborative research and development is probably going to be the way forward. And you can adopt newer materials as well, much quicker than a conventional car manufacturer can. Um, the point you made about, you know, taking the E2O into some of these markets where these races will be held, um, that, I mean, that's the part we obviously get. We understand why you do that. Uh, but you think that overall, even here in India, once this kind of a, uh, you know, once the race itself gets established and, you know, people know about it and see it and get excited about it, uh, do you think that adoptability, if that's a word, uh, will be faster, will be, you know, more easy to achieve? Yeah, I think... Uh in, when I look back at US and Europe, and I see when green became cool, right, and fashionable, it grew a lot. And, uh, and you're seeing that with new products. I think links with Formula E enable an aspirational value, which I think is important. And that brand value perception of people that this is new technology, it has a different thought connotation to it, I think will have an impact. How much, I don't know. I mean, ENY says it's going to help you sell 50 million vehicles in, in the next 25 years, but I think it will be a positive impact. It's a nice number. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> no, but you're right. There's no real way to quantify that. And in, and in India, the challenge is perhaps a little bit greater than what it may be in some other markets. Yeah, it's also a little bit more involved, you know. I mean, the racing is going to be very social media driven. The guys who get more tweets can actually push to pass. And so this whole thing of uh, an involvement in the racing is going to be there. So I think you're going to have a larger potential fan base who can be through social media linked. Uh, I think the younger generation here will probably have a larger, you know, uh, uh, attraction to that area. So five years from now, where, where are we going to be? Or oh, where will Mahindra River be? Forget about where the entire universe heads. <laughs> Let's just talk about uh, Mahindra River. Um, I think uh, we like to have a strong presence in India and globally. You know, I'd like this plant to be full uh, running and have additional plants to produce in cars. Uh, shifts and all yes, of that. Yes. <laughs> uh, uh, I would like new platforms for Mahindra uh, that coming from the beginning are electric ready. And so, um, be it an SUV or a bus or anything else, we have options on them. And electric that starting to happen though? Sorry to butt in there, but is that starting to happen already or is this still future No, I think, I think prototype work's happening, you know. Uh, uh, but I think once policies come out and there's more clarity, uh, we'll move in that area. 
So this is also Sang Yong Mahindra to think about in terms of being globally competitive. So. Yes, it, with it, with, you know, and, and I think the platform is going to be global. So we would like to see us more than just India and a strong presence. And, 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 and in probably Western markets, that look at it. We'd also like to see our infrastructure business through our, from our quick charging to solar solutions to battery financing, which will constitute other business opportunities uh, in at areas. Um, and I would, we've shown Connected Car 1.0 in these areas with online, and I think by then we should be at a 3 or 4.0, which would really mean a very different level. Um, the recent Mahendra rise price that we've offered for a million dollars will allow maybe some driverless technologies to come in in the future. So, so I think it's quite, going to be quite exciting, you know, where we see ourselves in five years. I'll save the cliched question for the end, uh, Chetan, which is, of course, the government involvement and, you know, policy change that is perhaps, you know, already um, something that should have happened. But having said that, new government, new impetus, new energy, do you, do you have some expectations? I think the NBEM 2020 document, which lays out the vision, um, is completed now and is available. And it's probably got all stakeholders, CM, car companies, all coming together to create it. Uh, it's a great starting point, and I just think it needs to be implemented. You know, the recommendations are given there. Is it achievable so, is the big question, right? In India, it's not just this particular document. We have many such reports and documents floating around, but you know, it's while everybody agrees with the idea, it's the implementation that's the problem. Yeah. I'm hoping, I think the government uh, seems to be saying, what are bottlenecks? What hasn't worked? What do we do to push them? Uh, energy security is an important aspect. I think linking uh, all of energy into one group means people can think, take a holistic view of energy. And you say, hey, if we're going to import 85% of our oil and we're going to go to 92, what is our energy policy? And then that links in. I think the structures are right. Um, as much as you, I'm really looking forward to seeing that if this gets implemented quickly. I'm right there with you, so I do, I do hope it's sooner than later. Thank you. Thanks. Always Thanks good to see you, and especially here. Yeah, <laughs> great, great to have you. All right.